you know what? I'm just going to address what you're saying in chat because I'm fucking crazy. Do you have a good series to watch and writing papers? No. Let's see. Um. Oh, yeah. I was going to respond to what you were talking about. So basically, basically, uh, we're going to talk about. Um. Let's go ahead and clear out the whole thing. Oi, oh, my God. Oi, oh, my God. So when you get your prompt, right? You get your prompt. Those are your instructions for your paper. I actually think if you get a prompt, this should guide every fucking thing you do. This should be your 10 commandments. Everything that you do should serve the function of the prompt. If the prompt says that you need to talk about like uh, X, Y, Z and how it relates to um, maybe A, B, C, and then it says that you need to have 20 sources, right? 20 sources. And it says that it needs, uh, you know, uh, an abstract maybe. Okay. And those are your requirements that you have these things. Uh, maybe also it has like a page count, right? Maybe it tells you that it needs to be like 10 pages, right? 10 pages, 20 sources. This is a bit much, but that's whatever. Um, if it tells you all of this, we need to order these in order of importance. What do you think is the most important guiding principle for everything we're going to do in our research? Well, hey, buddy, it's this one. This is number one. This is the number one most important thing on this hypothetical prompt. Okay? What do we think number two is going to be? Which of these do you possibly think? Of course it's this one. Our 20 sources. That is number two. That is our second most important thing on this entire paper. And number three. Ooh, which one do you think it is, chat? Which is number three? Which number three do you think is the most important thing in this paper? Is it the abstract or is it your page count? Which do you think we need to focus on next? Number three is your page count right here. This is number three. I don't give two f**ks about the abstract. I don't give two f**ks about the abstract. If it tells you you need uh, three pages of f**king uh, pictures, of pictures maybe, right? I don't care about that stuff. I don't care if it tells you that you need to relate. Well, I mean, I kind of do. If it says that you need to relate like three ideas from the class or something, that's worth considering. That might be like... Uh, that might be near number one. Number one is gonna be our topic, right? The topic is the most important thing that you wanna consider. And that topic specifically is going to be how that topic is interpreted by your teacher, because that's who you're writing for. You are lucky. You have an audience of one. You need to prepare all of your rhetoric and your logic for one person. So if that one person tells you to relate the ideas of X, Y, Z to the ideas of A, B, C, you need to think about what that person is expecting there. You need to think about maybe, oops, f maybe, what ideas needed to be related from class too, right? That's going to give you the information you need to pick what this is going to look like, to pick what the main part of your paper is going to look like, right? The direction that it's going to go. And then you are further limited by the sourcing. So if he tells us that we need 20 sources, if it takes a very specific way to relate these three ideas to A, B, and C, whatever, and that reduces the number of sources we have, we have a problem, right? The sources is the second thing we need to check because it's gonna affect our paper. So by looking at number one, we figured out we need to relate these two ideas, we need to relate the three ideas. So we have the X ideas and the A ideas, that's our tertiary thing, and those need to relate to the three ideas from the paper. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now. From there, I focus on level number two. We focus on the sourcing that we need to have for the paper because the sourcing is going to be our most difficult part. And the only way we know what to source is by knowing what the topic of the paper is. From there, I don't give two shits. This page count is usually dependent upon the sourcing requirements. Usually the sourcing is always going to be much more difficult than the 10 pages. We don't have to worry about it. As long as we can get one quote from each of these sources, right? As long as we get one quote for every or um maybe want to put two every 
one source, we're good. We're golden. That's fucking awesome. That's what we want. We want at least one quote. Now, but book smarts, how do I know without having written the paper already what kind of quotes will be good? Well, there should be little tidbits, little like sound bites of really good info in these sources that relate to either X and A or the three ideas. And as we keep in mind this rule of one quote per every one source, that's going to limit the sources that we have, right? We're only going to have sources that are useful to us. We should limit every source based on whether or not we can create a quote or a parenthetical to it. Because the only point of including these sources is to check the box of the sourcing requirement of the paper. So if it serves that function, we must immediately tie it to that function. We should limit the sources we pick based on their ability to give us a quote, right? And that quote should therefore be connected to these ideas, right? If we end up creating a source that doesn't relate to these two ideas or these three ideas, it shouldn't be in there, even if we can get a quote. So this is number one. After it relates to that, we need to figure out if it gives us a quote. If the source isn't able to give us a quote, if we're not able to cite it, don't include it. We don't need it. We can't put it on our work cited because we're not going to cite it. So there's no point, right? This keeps you honest. So, so far we're, we're being kept honest. After this, we need to check. We need to create some check boxes for these ideas. So maybe I'll take this color. We want sources and quotes for all of the requirements of number one. So we need sources for X. We need sources for A. We need sources for at least for one of uh, each of the three ideas that we need to incorporate. We need all. We need at least one for all of those. We need to be able to tie into all of those. That's probably a good objective for us to have. And what this does is look at how many concepts we have here. One, two, three, four, five, right? Because we have three ideas here and the two here. That's at least five sources. So at least by checking this box, we have five of our 20 sources already. And then what do you think should make up the other 15? Well, that's going to depend on number three, our pages. But we're going to want to figure out now at this point, once we've, you know, kind of got our sourcing and we, we've, you know, at least picked this five of 20 so that we have some, we're going to want to figure out after reading all these and having at least 20 sources, each of which can give us a quote. After we do that, then we're going to look at how can we arrange those onto a page. My personal system is to have an outline of every single source. And so this is my like sources, sources. Okay. And for every source, I have the, at least like one or two uh, words that are the name. And then at least like three or four words that are a quote, right? And that basically just tells me where in the text I need to control F to find my quote when I need it later. And that's all that I do. So basically when I'm taking notes of all these sources, I'm at the same time taking a note of each of my quotes and I'm giving one uh, to three keywords so that I can control F in the tab that I have that source in. So like um, for this one, let's say I, I had to, oh my God, let's say I wanted to, to do this one. Maybe I do performance and aphantasia is what I write for the title. And then maybe like, let's say I need to, for some reason, cite this line here. I'm gonna pick three, two to three unique words that are next to each other that I don't think will be replicated later. Um, so I might do lacked metacognitive. And if I look up lacked metacognitive, it'll bring me to this, to this sentence here because the likelihood of having lacked and metacognitive next to each other anywhere else in the paper is super low. So as long as I write down those two keywords, it'll bring me to the sentence I intend to use as my quote. So that's what I'm doing the entire time that I'm note taking for all these sources. Once that's done, once we've completed step two, step three is just about taking that source list and then organizing it, right? So let's say we had one, two, three, four, whatever. Five. Now we want to actually put these into a logical order. And the logic is going to be heavily dependent on number one, right? We want to 
now answer this question. Now that we have all of our sources, we want to figure out how do I piece them together in an order that answers this question? And how do I answer this question? Well, now that I'm an expert on it and I understand it, for me, this is the part that might be the most difficult for students, or at least should be, is the transition from like knowing all this stuff to explaining it to somebody in a decent way, like ordering that in a normal way. One thing that you can do is remember that you need to give people background. You need to uh, have your thesis you, or, or your argument, basically. And then you need to have your argument where you argue out all that, right? You're using all your, all your quotes and sources. These two things are kind of underneath each other. This one is underneath. And your, uh, your quotes are going to be here, too. And then you're going to have your conclusion, right? And your conclusion should have your results in it. Right. And now we have a basic outline for a paper. So background. Well, what kind of background do I need? Well, I need to explain X, Y, Z, its relation to A, B, C, and then I have three ideas I need to include in the class. So I don't know if we can include the three ideas. I don't know if it'll be super pertinent, but we can definitely make this part of our thesis and our background. So we need to explain everything about X, Y, Z, which means since we only have this five out of 20, or we assume we have 20 out of 20, we're gonna start going through those sources and assigning them to each of these areas. So let's say that number three was really good for explaining A. So I go, oh, okay, cool. So for thesis, we're gonna have number three, uh, whoops, I want this to be a different color. So basically, let's say for our thesis, we figure out, oh, okay, like, um, uh, or sorry, for my background, I need to explain X, Y, Z. Um, so sources three, uh, four, and uh, eight are really, really good for explaining that one. So that's three. And then for A, B, C, I actually figure out that like uh, one, uh, two, and actually four again are really good for explaining that one. And then if I really need to relate one or two ideas, maybe I figure out that source seven has a related idea that I wanted to include. Okay, dope. And then I start crossing these out as I'm including them. I have three, I have four, I have, uh, let's see here, I have two, I have one, I still need to include five, right? We're going down the list of these quotes to make sure that we hit this 20 source max uh, minimum. That's the reason why we sorted this out like this is because as we start to assign these quotes to sections of our paper, that creates the outline for us. For our argument, maybe we find that four is really good. I can finally find a place to include five. 11 is all right. Um, and that's for part one of my argument. And then maybe part two, like the second part of my thesis, like, I believe that uh, imagination is dumb because of X, Y, and Z. So for my X, maybe I use four, five, and 11. For my Y, maybe I'm looking at the, the, the teens and I still need a bunch. So maybe I need 13, 17, and uh, 14. Um, you know, you just go down the list and cross these out until you've used them all. And then you've assigned them to places in here. After that's done, you can take this and you can turn it into your final outline, right? if you really need to, connect the ideas here where it's not super clear to you. So figure out then the order that these sets need to be in for their paragraphs, for their respective points in the paper. So for our background section, maybe I figure out, oh, actually, um, it's not good to, to do it this way. Actually, if I go from four to, uh, to maybe three and then to eight and then to two, that's actually good. And then I run out of space, so I can't, I can't actually fit these. And then I just put an extra mark on them. I say, oh, okay, I wasn't able to use one. I wasn't able to use, uh, shoot, I wasn't able to use two, or I did use two. I didn't use five, whatever. So you can go back and just recircle those if they didn't end up working at this stage of the outline, and then you can figure out where you incorporate them later. It's really simple. If you keep this source list and then you keep your outline separate, these are helpful and they bounce off of each other really well. And then eventually, once you've selected the logical order to put in your quotes, all it's about, all you're responsible for writing is the in-betweens. All you're responsible for writing is here, here, and here. It's limited your work completely and it's giving you an outline where it's like brain dead. Anybody just needs to connect these ideas. So that's why I think like the writing is the easiest part because by the time we're, we're at an outline, at least for me, we have the entire paper basically done. All we do is connect these ideas, which should be easy because at this point we've toiled over their connection all the way up to here, right? We've selected the best connection. We're so aware of our argument and of our points that this is easy.
And then by the time we're done with this, we have an idea for what the most effective parts of our paper are. Maybe we figure out, oh, two is actually really, really strong, although one has a lot on the sourcing. So then we figure out, okay, well, now that I go back and I write my, um, my abstract, right? Now that I go back and let's say I finished my paper, I go up to here, I covered this topic, I included my 20 sources, it's, it's almost 10 pages, um, I related my ideas. Now I need to include the abstract uh, and that'll hit my 10 pages. So for my abstract, I'm going to select whichever one of these was the best and that's going to be my highlight for my thesis and stuff. That might be the focus of my abstract. So if two is really good and one has a lot of sources, I might want to open up with one to give me the opportunity to start into background. So I might have one as my reference as a parenthetical and just briefly explain the situation or relationship between XYZ and ABC. So I might say XYZ is related to ABC because of point number one, yada, 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 science, sh and then put my, my parenthetical. And then I move on to my actual argument. It's clear through blah, 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 that uh, statistically speaking, this is the best way to think about imagination, whatever. And then that's my number two. And then if I wanted to, I can pick any of these and use it as a parenthetical because later when we get to that paragraph, we'll be citing all this stuff. Um, and so having an outline like this, we have easy, easy, easy writing of an abstract because we have everything. We already know what's most effective. We know what is backed up by what amount of data. And we know based on our source list, if you wanted to, you can track how good these are too. Like next to the numbers, you can like keep a rating out of four. Like maybe this is a three out of four. Maybe this is a one out of four. Maybe this is a four out of four. And if you have a really good source, maybe that's the one you choose to include in your thing that you do in your abstract, right? Um, I don't know, it's up to you. And then once you're done with all that, then you hit your other dumb stuff. So like if you have a requirement of like, uh, in including tying something back or three pages of pictures or uh, at least two reference uh, uh, tables or some shit like that, you just knock those out at the end. Once the writing's done, that's easy. Once the writing is done, once your research is done, once all that's done, like easy, I'll just knock out the other requirements. We triage this because this is the order it matters in. It matters that we know what we're talking about. It matters we know how we need to talk about it. And it matters we know how much time or space we have to talk about it. Because those are all limits on what this paper is going to look like. All of the other little requirements after that, you should just check off at the end. Because once you have your full 10 pages, it's much easier to just remove things than it is to add things. So like, if you need another three pages of pics, but you have 12 pages of text, you can just start cutting stuff out. And again, refer back to your refer back to your outline. Oh, if argument one is really weak, then we know where to cut from, right? Like, okay, well, we'll cut out of argument one because it's not even very good. Um, and then that's where we'll get the space to include our three pages of pics, stuff like that. Um, holy f I've been talking a while. Let me go ahead and catch up on the chat. Works cited page is included. Uh, if they have a sourcing requirement, they're generally going to have a works cited page required. It wouldn't make sense if they would require one without the other. Man, this explanation of writing a paper is way better than the lessons I got about this. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, basically. Okay, there you go. That's how you write a paper. That's that's what you should do. You need to focus on the content of it. like, And it all should be based on your prompt. I didn't go out of my way to include anything else. The only outside thing I thought about was when we were considering our topic, I considered how my professor might think about that topic. And then that's it. That's the only other outside thing you should do. But yeah. This is how you write a paper. Maybe I'll post this to the uh, to the old YouTuber today. I need to shill on all these streams. If you guys haven't donated, if you're appreciating this, uh, you know, this content, if you're appreciating learning how to write a paper, hey, shoot me a donor. Hey, just do, you know, subscribe, uh, and Amazon will take like two thirds of the money or whatever. Um, but that's fine. If you get it free through Amazon Prime, that's great. But donos, donos are lovely. If you have work recommendations, definitely send them out. I appreciate it.